what I wanted to read to you guys. I have opened up three days in a uh, three times in a row to Zechariah, and Zechariah was the one that was John the Baptist's father. to Zechariah and Zechariah was the one that was John the Baptist's father and uh, um, he's the one that he went mute before Jesus uh, before John, John the Baptist was born I'm so sorry but he went mute because he kind of questioned the angel and didn't believe that his wife would get pregnant and so the angel told him you will be mute until your baby comes so that's absolutely amazing I mean it's just a really good book you guys I yeah the and what we're reading here in Luke is amazing I agree with the um, her assessment on that that uh, uh, what you know the whole thing with John going mute and then um, him confirming that his name is John um, and then you know being able to talk and, and teach and all that sort of stuff it, it's it, it is amazing I agree with that however Zacharias of Luke let's go up here there was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia alright this is not Zacharias son of Bacarius alright that's not the same Zacharias alright so let's go how do we do this here? Oh, uh, so oh, so Zacharias, Zacharias, Zacharias. However you want to say it, it's the same thing. All right, Zacharias or Z Z Zachariah, however you want to say it. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, son of Bacaria. All right, that's the same. Zechariah or Zacharias that we read about in Matthew 23 that is not the same Zacharias of the course of Abia it's a different Zechariah all right just wanted to make that clear I mean, that would be amazing if it was the same but it's not it would be it would be it would be too odd let's put it that way it would be too odd if it was and it it's not it can't be it's not possible so uh, just wanted to share that and then of course this woman here like others they're getting they're getting this idea that Zechariah 14 is talking about the millennial reign and it's clearly not I've covered this before but just uh, a short overview is that it's it, it is talking about the end of the world and it is talking about all the wickedness being destroyed and it is also talking about how there will be no more wickedness all right um, no question about it but there is no mention whatsoever of this idea of Jesus reigning a thousand years all right, it's not anywhere. I can't point to a particular verse and say this is what they're talking about because there's nothing at all, nothing at all. They, it's not in Revelation 20 either, but at least in Revelation 20, I can say, hey, look, it's not talking about Jesus reigning a thousand years. It's talking about us that are saved that are born of God living and reigning with Christ during this time period I don't have that in Zechariah 14 you know I can point to um, things leading up to the end of the world the end of the world and after the end of the world 
when there is no more wickedness. I, I can do that sort of stuff here in Zechariah 14. Cannot point to this idea of a thousand year period. It's not there. Now I know people like this are getting it from others that are taking advantage of people that do not read their Bible. That's all I can tell you. Now, um, if we scroll here to the end, she's talking about Revelation 17. Oh, I, I'd like to know what you guys think. Who do you think that, that king could be? Uh, in talking about Revelation 17, um, just before that, she reads some verses here. The great whore of Babylon and uh, obviously it's the Roman Catholic Church it's always been the Roman Catholic Church and so without playing her video here she's uh, holds to this futurist and also dispensationalist viewpoint all right so Anybody that claims there's a thousand year period coming that's a dispensationalist, they believe that Jesus is going to reign a thousand years and then he's going to stop reigning and then apparently they're going to take over. It's sort of like uh, Mormons believe that they're going to be given a new planet and they're going to be the Jesus of that planet. And they're going to be able to have sex with all the women they want. The Muslims, same thing. That there's coming a time period when they're going to be given all these women and just be able to have sex. And it's going to be just a, one great big orgy. And that's what dispensationalism is. All right, They're waiting for their time when they can just go nuts, right? And... We read in Second Peter 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust. Okay, so if you're a woman, their viewpoint is that there's coming a time when they'll be able to have um, sex with all these men and have spirit babies and all that sort of stuff. So it's just, it's pure insanity is what it is. All right, that's what dispensationalism is. And of course we can go to... Uh, Genesis 6 uh, when these they were taken wise of all which they chose all right and the problem wasn't uh, anything at all to do with genetics again the problem was that every imagination <clears throat> excuse me every imagination of the thoughts of this heart was only evil continued the problem is the heart Alright, so, again, <clears throat> there's quite a bit of um, calculation from Satan and all this, and people have given over, they've signed their souls over to... Alright, so I don't know what any of that stuff is. So, why I don't know. When she's, when she's talking about uh, who's the king, she don't know, well, you can know. And it's very simple. All you have to do is realize that the beast of Revelation is the fourth beast of Daniel. And the fourth beast is the fourth king in his kingdom. And the beast that was and is not and yet is is the transformation of the Roman Empire from a physical empire to a spiritual empire known as the Roman Catholic Church and the five king or seven kings excuse me are five are fallen this is talking about a succession of popes exactly what we see there's the beast part of it and there's there's the physical part of it the physical uh, power that they exude over the entire earth and then there's the spiritual aspect of it as well the woman represents the religion and the because she's the great whore she poses herself as the wife or bride of christ and she is not she is the whore she's a wannabe wife the fake wife 
All right, and then of course all the kings of the earth. So, um, you know, whoever your president or king or leader is in your country, they are still under the pope. You think of um, the pyramid on the back of your dollar bill. We hear about, or you think about the, uh, you know, the the old phrase, "All roads lead to Rome." Right at the very top of the pyramid is the great whore. All right, the king of Babylon. And it's all. This is all in sp the spirit of the Babylon, um, or spirit of Babylon, which was the first beast of Daniel, or the first king of Daniel. And of course, yeah, I've been over this. Uh, numerous times you think about Lucifer mentioned one time in the entire Bible and it's in Isaiah 14 and the context is a proverb against the king of Babylon what's interesting here is that this word Lucifer is a Latin word and there's only one country in the entire world that speaks Latin as its native tongue and of course it's Vatican City alright that great city that reigns over the kings of the earth alright all you have to do is connect the dots put the pieces of the puzzle together again Zechariah 14 no mention at all of a thousand year period it's not there all right so when it comes to dispensationalism and yeah, it's not true there's no dispensationalism supported by the Bible at all there's and there's in this idea of futurist everything's gonna happen in the future uh, the problem the biggest problem that I see is let's say Jesus comes back today are you going to say, hey, wait a second, Jesus, he can't come back yet. The Antichrist hasn't come here yet. Well, you know what? He's going to say, you missed it, man. It was right there in front of you the whole time, and you missed it. All right? Let's, so let's move on. Let's forget about all that stuff, and let's continue. So, uh, look, it's not that big of a deal, but, man, wouldn't you like to know right now? The mysteries of the Bible, well, it starts with faith. Faith, not just in Jesus Christ, but in the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. How can you say you have faith in Jesus Christ, but you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands? All right, think about that. If you believe in a perfect God, you believe God can part the Red Sea, can heal the sick can raise the dead but can't give you a Bible that you can believe in come on man I'm telling you the key to understanding the Bible is faith it's always been faith as we read here in 2nd Corinthians 3 even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart because they lack faith Nevertheless, when they shall have faith, when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. And you think about everything all the way, going all the way back to Noah. Again, by faith, Noah being born of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. It's always been about faith. You want to understand the Bible, it starts with faith. Okay? And I just want to point this out. I enjoy people talking about it. I want to try to correct uh, whenever I can. It helps to sharpen me, helps to keep me sharp, keep helps me to keep me studying the Word of God and uh, proving everything with the Bible. So I just want to share that all with you. Have a good day.